So here we are, the beginning of our destination. I'll show you the plan real quick. Right now we are right here and we are going to take this trail down to here, then hit the North Country Trail, circle back around to the lean-to here, spend the night, and then hike out in the morning, uh, hit Coon Run Road, and uh, back to starting point. So that's the general plan. Recently purchased a nice Kelty backpack while I was at Cabela's about a month ago, um, and I've just been dying to use it. So I finally got uh, two days off in a row. So this is going to be my first ever solo lean-to camping mission. And of course, I can't go anywhere without a fishing pole. So I've been to this lean-to before. I hiked out there, scoped it out uh, at the beginning of the summer. It's now the end of the summer, so I know exactly where I'll be staying. There's a gorgeous looking brook trout stream that runs right past the lean-to. And uh, I'm very excited to, uh, to check it out, to finally spend the night there and uh, give native brook trout fishing a try at a, a place where you really actually got to hike into it. I'm going to take you guys along. I've got all of my filming equipment with me again because this is just a quick overnight trip. It's nothing too crazy. I'm only hiking about six miles round trip. I, I don't need to pack too much food or anything like that, so I'm able to carry all of my filming gear and uh, some of my fishing gear as well. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy the adventure and uh, we'll see what we can catch, see what we encounter. Well, I don't feel like pulling out the camcorder for it, but we do have some pretty neat fungi growing on this log here. First interesting thing we've seen. Well, this certainly is a pretty spot. Now what I don't know is whether this is Willis Creek or some other stream that crosses the trail. See, there's some pools there. So, uh, I don't know, it might be worth it to take a few casts for native brook trout, see what we can find. Found some good looking pools, check these bad boys out. Fortunately, I also found some stinging nettle, but I'm gonna fish these. I bet we're gonna catch our first brook trout. Hey, Sean. First native rookie of the trip. Beautiful. Beautiful trout that is. Look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> Just a little guy out of this little pool here. Alrighty, cool. Got that whole thing on film. We dive this guy, there he goes. Beauty. Alrighty, well we caught our first native brook trout of this trip on this beautiful stream here. We're going to call it quits though and get back on the trail. I have no idea what stream this is. And I just wanted to get native brook trout, get a native brook trout on the board for this trip, so we accomplished that. I don't know if we're gonna have time to make any more stops, it's like five o'clock now, and we need to get to the lean-to before dark, but we'll see. It's always fun to have some little trail obstacles. Uh, oh boy, here we go. Speaking of trail obstacles, I don't know how we're going to get around this. <laughs> and there's stinging nettle everywhere. This is where having a fishing pole makes things a lot more challenging. This pack's going to get caught if I try going that way. Looks like we got to go this way. I'm just going to try and go all the way around and just uh, watch out for uh, stinging nettle. I don't see any back here. It's annoying with this pack too. I'm not used to having a pack this big with... Uh, a sleeping pad that can get caught on stuff. <laughs> I'm used to my tackle box where everything's pretty concise so I can just charge through uh, the brush, or my tackle bag rather. All right, oh, there goes a little chipmunk. I think that was an animal I saw spook. Must have been a little chipmunk. All right, I think we made it through there without any uh, stinging nettle encounters. Here's another field of stinging nettle. <laughs> Boy, this trail's getting, it's getting a little bit um, I mean, I don't want to say challenging. This isn't physically challenging in any way. It's just uh, the obstacles are challenging. I don't know what the word is for that, but you guys know what I mean. It's a neat little switchback we got here. Cool. This is this is fun. 
All right. Okay, and I think we're back on our way. We're making it to the top of the ridge. Should be able to get some phone service up there. Let's check our phone. Hey, <laughs> I'm glad I'm filming. I got this on camera. There is the halfway point to our journey here. Six o'clock. So uh, we should get to the lean-to with about an hour to spare. Hey, phone service. We'll lose it as soon as we start the descent. Cool, we'll check my uh, email real quick, see if we got any new comments on Cray Outdoors YouTube channel. I don't actually have phone service where I live. Holy cow, <laughs> all right. I wish I was filming when all that came in. Just got like four text messages and uh, look at all these YouTube comments. New reply, what do you think about blah, blah, blah. Looking forward to blah, 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 <laughs> lots of YouTube comments. Oops, I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> I'm getting a phone call while I got phone service. That is hilarious. Hello? Chad Gray said, uh, <laughs> Mommy and Jayla will be at Quaker about 7. <laughs> All right, that's, it's extremely, extremely ironic that you called when you did. Just got a drink of water, got to talk to my dad while I was in phone service, which is nice. Always nice to get phone service in the middle of the wilderness catch up on YouTube comments, and talk to people. Anyway, we are now going to head out of phone service, down the North Country Trail, away from Mount Tuscarora, towards Willis Creek, lean to. Let the adventure continue. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> I don't know why they won't just cut the tree completely, but that works, I guess. Pretty neat stretch of trail in through here. I don't know if you guys can hear the hawks. That peeping you hear, I believe, is a goshawk. Goshawk, I don't know how to pronounce it. Did find one huge advantage to hiking with an ultralight fishing pole. You can do this and cut down all of the spider webs that are in the way of the trail in front of you, which uh, I find myself typically doing this with a stick, which is actually heavier than, you know, one of these nice fiberglass ultralight fishing poles are actually quite light. So. Uh, I might need to hike <laughs> with the fishing pole from now on, even uh, if I'm not planning on doing fishing. This is definitely a lot nicer than uh, hauling around a stick, and it's certainly a lot nicer than having a spider web uh, in your face. Up here, looks like we've got a fresh blowdown. Probably occurred in the storm we had earlier this week out this way. And I'm going through stinging nettle. Ike. Uh, boy, how do we want to get over this one? Seems not bad. This is an easy, easy up and over. All right, continuing on. Well, we've made it to the lean-to. Now the question is, is it occupied? Doesn't look it. Looks like somebody might have even left us some firewood. Oh no, maybe it's occupied. <laughs> we'll find out. No, nope, looks like it's unoccupied. Looks like somebody just left us some stuff, which is cool. All right, home sweet home for the night. So this is just a quick walk from the lean-to here. Just gonna head down this trail down here. And look at how beautiful this is right here. Check this out. <laughs> wow. Definitely going to be heading down here, doing some brook trout fishing in the morning before it's time to leave. Um, right now, get our bear hang. We've gotta cook dinner, we gotta get a fire going. Got a lot to do right now before dark, and we've only got about an hour before dark. Now again, a quick walk from the lean-to. We're just gonna follow these blue markers, and uh, I'll show you why I didn't pack much water with me. At this lean-to, located just upstream from it, is an absolutely gorgeous spring. Check this out. Gorgeous spring, delicious water, not much water flowing, boy. <laughs> Good thing there's some water flowing though. That's all we need to fill up our canteens. Ah, took it a little while to fill up, but this water is delicious. Absolutely best water in the county in my opinion. And it's ice cold too. 
that being said, as you can see, the spring, it's not running very much. So um, if you do visit this lean-to uh, during the dry season anyway, you might not want to bank on this stream running. Um, that's a mistake, as you can see, that we almost made because we did bank on this stream running. And uh, it's barely running right now. But uh, it's running, and so that's all we need to get some water. And again, the water at this particular spring is just awesome. I was expecting this to just be a trail registry. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Well, there's the trail registry and the map, which is nice. What is all of this junk? Oh, cool. Matches, packs, a zip tie. <laughs> all stuff I brought with me just in case. A rubber band. A bunch of just in case stuff. I guess it's cool that, I don't know, they just leave it here for people. It's like a broken carabiner. <laughs> all right. Some rope they maybe do a bear hang with or something it's kind of crappy rope hey some toilet paper again this is all stuff i brought uh i didn't expect it to be left here that's neat this is like christmas day boy if i, I could i didn't even need to pack anything to go camping <laughs> just food not even with between my brook trout gear and uh <laughs> these knives i can probably catch my own food these are nice knives too well i mean it looks dull but it's a nice knife if you sharpened it Interesting. Bunch of crazy stuff in here. There's another knife. I don't know why that one's got pink tape on it. Some toilet paper I don't want to touch, but I'm going to because, okay, there's just more toilet paper back there. And there is a pen in here. All right, well, that was interesting. We're going to sign the trail registry and, uh, I guess, put all of this stuff back. Got that there's actually an outhouse at this lean-to, but it looks to be in pretty darn rough shape. Looks like somebody burned the door. I hate it when people do stuff like that. Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, the door might have fallen off naturally, and then somebody took it and burned it, but still, uh, I mean, the better solution would have been to have left it until the North Tr Country Trail Commission could come through and fix it. But anyway, yeah, there is an outhouse here. It looks pretty gross, and uh, I can understand why people are using the woods as opposed to the outhouse. I still wish people would bury it, or at the very least, go far enough away from the campsite where everybody's not going to see it. Anyway, let's keep looking for firewood and a place to hang our bear bag. Just so uh, you guys are aware, felling trees for firewood is also uh, sort of a no-no. I, I used to be an assistant forest ranger and I patrolled state land, um, educating people on what the rules are and stuff like that. So that's why I'm anal about this sort of stuff, <laughs> but the burying your poop and, and not felling trees illegally, but anyway. Dead and downed is the rule for firewood, and if you look around, there is absolutely plenty of dead and downed wood all over. So, yeah, there's absolutely no need to be felling trees out here. No need whatsoever. Just being lazy. I think that this is supposed to be a bear hang, but uh, just so you guys know, that's not how you do a bear hang. <laughs> should be on a limb that's four feet from the tree. And it should be at least 100 feet from your campsite. And uh, it's not supposed to look like that. I mean, I don't. you wouldn't want to drag a bear this close uh, to the lean-to. The whole point of a bear hang, it's still the food is still going to attract the bears. They're just not going to be able to get it. So you want to keep it 100 feet from your campsite. A bear could still very easily get that. Bears can climb trees. Um, yeah, I don't know. Whoever did this uh, didn't know what they were doing. Something I just noticed. <laughs> Right here, there is some uh, relatively fresh bear scat uh, right here, as you can see. And the lean-to is right here. <laughs> so, yeah, bears definitely patrol this area, I'm sure. Um, they check out this lean-to probably every morning. Yeah, again, that bear hang that those people made is uh, a bear could easily get that. And, of course, it's going to bring a bear into the campsite because the bear hang is actually in the campsite. Just things to keep in mind. Oh, it's getting dark now. I don't know how I can see on the camera. There is a little piece of rope hanging from this maple here. Uh, clearly, somebody did a bear hang from this tree before. It's a little close to the lean-to, but maybe, I don't know, a little less than 100 feet. I think it's going to suffice for tonight. Well, we haven't started dinner yet. We're going to eat dinner after dark. It won't be till till dark that I actually hang the food. So I won't be able to show you how to actually do a proper bear hang. For now, I'm just going to get the line over the tree. Hopefully. Ah, almost. 
almost had it on the first try, actually, which is surprising. That never happens. If you get good at it, you can do it on the first try, but I was never very much, I was never really much of an athlete to begin with, which is why I took up fishing. All right. Success. That's good enough. It's not the branch I was aiming for, but it's good enough. That'll get us, yeah, certainly good enough. All we really have to start a fire is leaves, and I found a little piece of paper. Okay, well, here we go. While we still have some light, let's get this fire started, shall we? All right, somewhere under here is that little piece of paper, and I'm going to try and light that. It's best to light it from the bottom so it burns up and catches these leaves. Here we go, moment of truth. That did not catch. There we go. Now it started. We're burning. We're burning. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> well, my piece of paper has burnt up, and my fire bundle did not catch. <laughs> that was about the worst case scenario. Attempt to. Just need to get some of these leaves started. That are pretty green still. <laughs> the leaves are just too green and everything's just too wet. Well, I had this idea as a backup plan all along. I didn't want to cheat and have to go for it, but I really wanted to try and get a fire started with nothing but leaves. But um, fortunately, it didn't happen. So now we are using toilet paper which makes an excellent fire starter, as you can see. Or not. Yay! Yes! Holy cow! Starting this fire was a lot more difficult than I had anticipated. With the rain we had this morning, everything's just damp enough. That was a serious struggle getting the fire started today. Man, oh man, we've got a fire going now. We've got a real fire. We're gonna let this burn down, cook on the coals. Hopefully, I can get this thing on film. Just got a flying squirrel to come and say hello. He ran this way. There he is. Come on. There he is. There he is. Did you see him? Did you see him? There he goes. There he is. He's right there. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> there he goes. There he is. At least I running up the tree. I hope I got him on film. There he is. I hope you can see him on my camera. <laughs> Them things are so fast. How neat. Baby weasel. Baby freaking weasel. Holy crap. There he is. There he is. There he goes. Yes, I saw baby weasel. <laughs> there he goes. There's another one. <laughs> that thing scared the crap out of me. Holy cow. I, I walked down uh, away from the campsite a little bit to take a pee and grab some more firewood. And uh, I was about to cross this bridge and that weasel popped his head out right in front of me. Scared the heck out of me. That's cool. I don't know what kind of weasel that was. Baby. Freaking. Okay, well, let's see what's on the menu. We've got some beef jerky to snack on. A bunch of these. I, I've got like two more. Uh, these are the two that I brought with me. I figure I can have one for dinner today and one for breakfast tomorrow. Freeze-dried meals. And uh, I've had these before. They're quite good. We might just have to save that one for breakfast and uh, give this one a try tonight. One serving. Pretty easy. I think you just, yeah, just add water. <laughs> All right, here we go. 
think it's enough water. I don't know. Maybe a little more. I, I, I don't really know what I'm doing at the moment. Throw on the lid. And I guess we just drop this on the fire. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Now we just wait for that to boil. Something's down there. I heard a huff. Guessing it was a deer. Could have been a bear. There we go. It's starting to boil. Cool. Yeah, our water is up to a boil. Awesome. Okay, here we go. On with the boiling water. Eek. Oh, or, or two thirds a cup boiling water. I she had a line in it. I'd say it's probably about two thirds a cup boiling water. <laughs> I have no idea, actually. I don't have any way to measure. But I'd say it's about that. Now we carefully stir. And then we wait four minutes. This is seal the bag. Wait four minutes and carefully stir again. I think we might have used a little bit too much water. Well, one thing that is very clear to me. I clearly used way too much water. <laughs> that is definitely more than two-thirds of a cup, which is my own stupidity. But, oh well. I'd say is about done. Let's try this. Let's see how let's see how we do. We want to be careful not to spill any because we actually don't want to attract um, bears and whatever else to the campsite. But no, yeah, not bad. My water could have been a little bit hotter. Like I could have used less water, gotten the water boiling a little bit more. I got kind of impatient, but uh, certainly edible. I've eaten worse stuff. <laughs> Tomorrow morning's breakfast, we're going to use less water, boil it hotter, and uh, see how that biscuits and gravy is, but this is all right. Tasty. The, the texture of the chicken's a little weird. Once again, something's down there. I'm just periodically turning on the camera and talking, because I keep hearing animals walking in that creek down there, and uh, I don't want them to come up here. So we had a nice little meal. Now we're just going through and making sure that all scented items are uh, out of my backpack. I spent a lot of money on this brand new Kelty. Uh, the last thing I want is for it to get ripped open by a bear. Uh, not to mention, obviously, I don't want a bear entering the lean-to either because I'm going to keep this in the lean-to. We'll play it safe. Got all of our stuff ready to hang. Let's go hang it. Make your alien. Choke him. And we're gonna pop him in the eye. There we go. There's our knot on that. Next thing we want to do is tie the stick on here. We want to put this line through here. Uh, here we go. Now we want to tie this up as high as it'll go. Pull that up as high as it'll go. Take this. Step on this. Get this as high as we possibly can. Alright. Stick is tied on there now. Now I can let the bag down, hopefully. That's actually, that's a good distance. Yeah, that's four feet below the tree. I think we're good there. Cool. All right. We've got our food successfully hung. Nice. This is my first uh, night ever alone in a lean-to. So we'll see how we sleep. Uh, logically speaking, it really... It shouldn't be any more scary than being with somebody. I mean, if a bear or whatever came in here and tried to kill me, it's not like being with somebody is going to make a difference. But I don't know, just being alone, it, it definitely makes it a lot scarier. And I don't know why. It's just so quiet. You hear every little noise. But I have my earphones with me. If I'm hearing too many noises and having trouble sleeping, I can put in my earbuds, listen to music, and hopefully fall asleep. We'll see. I know that like 90% of people uh, would be terrified to do this, so 
um, I've got bugs attracted to the light. So we're going to cut this short, but it makes me feel cool. It makes me feel tough because I know most people would be afraid to do this. I've got one of those giant mosquito-looking things that's not actually a mosquito buzzing at this light. So I'm going to sign off. I'll see you guys in the morning, and uh, hopefully we can get some sleep.